There's nothing better than a glass of red wine after a long day of work. It's apparent that most people agree with me, and more and more are coming around, as the market for wine has increased exponentially over the last two decades. Thus, as the market improves and gets more lucrative, it becomes even more important to have predictive tools. Hi, my name is Dashiell Burkhart, and today I'll be talking about my machine learning model and my research question of, are we able to predict the quality of wine? Now, I wanna reiterate that my research question is about predicting wine, but is it, can we predict the quality of red and white wine based on their chemical composition? Before I could really dive into creating a model, I needed a standard data set. And so from there, I went to UC Irvine's machine learning repository. There, I found two data sets, a red data set and a white wine data set that had to do with both variants of the Portuguese Vinho Verde wine. They all had the same variables, but in this case, one was white wine and one was red wine. I combined these two into one data set, and together they have 6,497 observations and 13 features, one that I created to distinguish between whether or not it was red or white wine. As you can see here on this slide, we have a number of variables that have to do with the chemical composition, so we're off to a great start. I really want you to focus on the bottom two variables, however. Quality, which will be our target variable, is a score between 0 and 10. Red wine is the uh, variable that I came up with, where it is 1 if it's red wine and 0 if it's white wine. I also really wanted to get an idea of what data set I was really working with, and so I created a histogram for the types of wine. In this case, you can see that's a little bit imbalanced with much more red wine observations than white wine, and we really have to take that into consideration when we come to our conclusions. Now, I began my process with my target engineering. I really wanted to split quality into a binary problem, as I wanted to show low quality versus high quality. In this case, I said low quality was anything lower than a seven on the quality score, and high quality was anything that was greater than or equal to a score of seven. And we also did a histogram of these quality scores once I broke it into a binary set. As you can see, again, it's an imbalanced set. So we really have to take this into consideration when we start creating our model. And the next step was the imputation and coding. While there was no missing data within my data set, I really wanted this to be robust so that if I came up with more data later that possibly was missing, especially in my test set, I would be able to kind of have something ready to catch that. In this sense, anything that was numerical would go into uh, imputation that would find the median, and categorical would use the mode. I also have one categorical variable, which was the uh, red wine variable I created. I used the one hot encoder for that variable, and since there were two uh, unique classes for that, it broke it into two different uh, columns in this case. So I began my model selection. In this case, I really focused on uh, three, logistic regression, random forest classifier, and extra tree classifier. These really stood out to me in my studies as being extremely well efficient in kind of predicting classifiers. So I really wanted to work with these three and then go through a range of, as you can see here, hyperparameters that we can tune so what I was really working with was a randomized search CV. So I wasn't really set on using a grid search as grid search can work a little bit slowly. In this case, random, random search actually can work a little bit faster and sometimes can come up with even better models. So I stuck with that. I also used stratified, uh, stratified fold to kind of help with the imbalance in the data set as well. And from this, I got my best model. Now my best model was extra trees classifier with the following hyperparameters, a class weight of balanced, criterion of entropy, max depth of 100, and an N estimators of 50. Now for the extra trees classifier, it's very similar to a random forest, but in this case, it's different in the sense that when it splits 
or chooses how to split, it does so randomly. And so for this problem, I had to decide what metrics I was going to use to really gauge how well my model was doing. The first metric I used was F1. This was a balance between recall and precision. In this case, recall is of the positive samples, how many did we find? And precision is that of those predicted as positive, how many did we get right? For the F1 score for our model was a 0 0.88. We really wanted to shoot for a one because that is the top score that you can get for an F1. As you can see, it's a very, uh, very great score as an F1, but I was still really interested in diving in deeper, especially knowing that we were working with an imbalanced data set. So I also brought up the confusion matrix. In this case, it kind of shows me the true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. Right away, we can see that the true negatives, we were very good at catching them, but we could do a little bit better on our uh, true positives. The classification port also shows us the recall and precision for both classes. In this case, for zero, again, that is the low quality one. The precision and recall is great. It's 0.9 and 0.97. However, for the uh, precision recall for low quality, it's 0.84 and 0.55. So we really need to work on that. In conclusion, um, it does better, my model does better classifying low quality versus high quality. We can still use it to identify bad wines, um, which help, would probably help make purchasing wine more efficient. Limitations for this model is that we only really used Portuguese Vino Verde wines, and we may need to use more diverse range of rankers. My next steps, I would really like to use XGBoost and possibly get more data.